In Spider-Man No Way Home, Peter Parker faces his greatest challenge yet, and it involves the multiverse. But is the multiverse possible? Let's find out. Hi there, I'm Dr. Barry Fitzgerald, the superhero scientist, and on this channel you'll find videos about science, the multiverse, superheroes, Star Wars, and lots of other topics. If you're enjoying the video, give it a like. Right, let's take a look at Spider-Man and the multiverse. In Spider-Man No Way Home, Peter Parker fights against multiple villains from different universes, including the Green Goblin, Sandman, Electro, Doctor Octopus, and the Lizard. All of these villains come from different universes and somehow end up in the Spider-Man universe that's part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's a lot of universes. But is the multiverse possible? The short answer is, yes, it is possible. I'm pretty sure a lot of you are going to be really happy about that. Maybe you might want to meet multiple versions of yourself or multiple versions of Spider-Man and Peter Parker. So how does it work? The multiverse is made up of a number of universes all together, and a universe is quite big. But to explain how the multiverse might work, I need to start thinking about the very small, first of all, about quantum particles. In the world of quantum physics or quantum mechanics, tiny particles like electrons or photons can behave as a particle or as a wave, and this is known as particle wave duality. To get more information on particle wave duality, be sure to check out my video about the time twister from the Disney Plus series Loki. In quantum physics, particles like electrons or photons can be represented as waves until you measure or detect them. When they are measured or detected, they will suddenly change from a wave into a particle and be seen as a particle at a particular position in space. The probability of the location of an electron is related to its wave function and everything has a wave function. Electrons, you, me, and cats. Schrodinger's cat is perhaps the weirdest and the cruelest way of explaining wave functions, probabilities, and the wonderful world of quantum mechanics. And it will be very important for the multiverse. So here's how Schrodinger's cat thought experiment works. Schrodinger's cat is a thought experiment that was introduced to talk about the paradox of quantum superposition, the idea that something can be in two states at the same time. For this thought experiment, Erwin Schrodinger placed a cat in a box, but not only did he place a cat in the box, he also put a little bottle of poison, and then there's also a radioactive isotope which is unstable, and when it decays, it will give off some small particles, which are then detected with a Geiger counter, which is attached to a hammer. Now, the decay of the radioactive isotope will take place randomly, and whenever it does decay, or one atom decays in the isotope, it will emit some particles which will be detected by the Geiger counter, and then the Geiger counter will drop the hammer on the poison, emitting the poison into the box, and killing the cat. At the start of the thought experiment, if you close the box and immediately open it again, it's quite likely that the cat will still be alive because it's unlikely that an atom in the radioactive isotope will have decayed in that very short period of time. However, if you leave the box for some time and then decide to go back and check, you can't be sure that an atom from the radioactive isotope hasn't decayed in that time and that the cat might be dead or alive. According to quantum superposition, the cat is both alive and dead at exactly the same time. And here's the catch. You won't know if the cat is dead or alive until you open the box and collapse its wave function. Its wave function is directly proportional to the probability of the cat being alive or dead. In this situation, it's gonna have a 50-50 chance of being alive or dead. I can imagine that most of you will have your fingers crossed that the cat is alive in the box. So how is this thought experiment, Schrodinger's cat, related to the multiverse then? Well, according to Hugh Everett's Many Worlds interpretation of this thought experiment, it is not the case that the cat is dead or alive. 
it is the case that the cat is alive in one universe and the cat is dead in another. But the universes can't influence each other or contact each other. I'll get back to that later on. Let's imagine a few examples then. Here's one where you have the cats and you have a situation in our universe that the cat is either alive or dead. But according to the many worlds interpretation, it isn't a case of alive or dead. It's actually a case of having two separate universes, either universe A or universe B, where in one the cat is alive and the other the cat is dead. And this will be the case for anything in the universe where there are multiple outcomes possible. Imagine that you were to throw a dice in this universe and you know when you throw a dice that there are six options. And in our universe, well, one of those options is going to come to fruition. For example, you might throw a, a two with the dice. But according to the many worlds interpretation, all possibilities happen, but when they all happen, they all happen in different universes in the multiverse. You can actually think of the multiverse like a book. So here's a book, some shameless self-promotion of my own book, Secrets of Superhero Science. Imagine that this is the multiverse and every page in the book is a different universe. When you have two pages which are close to each other, well, those two universes will be quite similar to each other. There might be slight differences. For example, these might be two pages in the same chapter. But if you look at two universes on opposite sides of the multiverse, like pages at the start and pages at the end, they're gonna be completely different. In the case of the book, they might be about different topics, but in the multiverse, they might have completely different beings there, different planets, and different Spider-Men. Hugh Everett also indicated that the universes in the multiverse cannot influence each other. In other words, you can't have something cross from one universe in the multiverse to another universe in the multiverse. Using the book analogy, that would be like saying that it would be possible for a word on one page to jump to the page beside it. We know that that isn't the case. So the universes with the different Spider-Man villains are some distance apart from each other in the multiverse, which probably explains why the villains are different in the respective universes. For one thing, the Peter Parkers in all the different universes in the multiverse all look different from each other, and this could be due to random changes in their DNA as the universes started to split and create more versions, which is why they have different hair color or different eye color. And there are also probably Peter Parkers in other universes in the multiverse who don't have any spider-like powers at all. However, one big thing about Hugh Everett's many worlds interpretation of the multiverse is that universes cannot influence each other or send information from one universe to the other. But the technology needed to move across the multiverse is featured in the Disney Plus series Loki and developed by a variant of Kang the Conqueror. That's something for a future video, I think. Transport across the multiverse. And there you go, just a tiny little bit of the physics behind the multiverse and how Peter Parker can meet Peter Parkers. And yes, the multiverse is real. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for more videos on The Superhero Scientist. I've been Dr. Barry Fitzgerald, and until I see you next time, always think super.